got uh, here with me John Fun, political commentator. You know him very well. Uh, there's so much still to go through with the events of the past week. But one of the things that we were talking about before is just where this all went wrong. And John, you have found information and an analysis that shows how the diversity, inclusion program, and the Democrats' embrace of identity politics wound up being basically the fuse that got lit ages ago that's wound up blowing up this campaign. Well, you can find on the internet a memo that a Democratic consultant has just prepared. He expected Kamala Harris to lose. So in advance, he said, I know when all this went off the rails. And it was in the spring of 2020 when Joe Biden was pressured by the feminists of the Democratic Party to promise to pick a female nominee. Then George Floyd's murder took place. And what happened? He had to pick both a woman and a woman of color. And Kamala Harris was there, and he picked a completely unqualified person, and it meant that he would try to run for a second term because he didn't trust her to run. Yeah. And, of course, he was forced off, and, of course, she proved totally inadequate to the task. Well, so, you know, let's go through that, because you talk about then through the course of this first term. How do you see the fact that Joe Biden didn't trust her as part of the fact that, uh, and also the way that, you know, I think a lot of people had a lot of doubts about her actual competence, did that wind up serving as kind of a protection racket for Joe Biden that nobody would try and push him off because the alternative would be this Harris character? Well, the word that was used in the White House was insurance policy. Yeah. And uh, he had an insurance policy. Uh, unfortunately, the insurance policy turned against him and didn't, didn't provide dividends. Uh, I can tell you right now, I would, I would love to be a fly on the wall for the following two conversations. Sometime this month, Kamala Harris is going to have her last interview with Joe Biden before the, she, they leave office. That will be interesting. The second one will be the incoming president traditionally meets with the outgoing president. So Joe Biden will be meeting with Donald Trump. Oh, would we be a fly on the wall for those? But I mean, Joe Biden, you know, his whole thing, I think, has been he wanted to go down in history as the only person who could defeat Donald Trump. I suspect that he's not unhappy about all of this. Oh, I think he, I think he has mixed feelings yeah. when, when he's sentient. Um, I think that half the time he is very bitter that he was replaced on the ticket. So he sort of has some satisfaction that, of course, the person they replaced him with failed. On the other hand, it is unfortunately going to be in the first paragraph of his obituary. Yeah, well, that's true. But when you go back to this whole diversity strategy that the Democrats ran with, is it kind of ironic then, John Fund, that when you look at the results of what happened Tuesday night, well, when it came to getting minority votes, it didn't work at all. And in fact, in many, many um, demographic categories, particularly Latinos, Donald Trump really did well. He took massive uh, swings off of the Democrat vote in 2020. Well, give you one example of how the diversity program black backfired. The biggest concentration of Puerto Ricans in the U.S. is in Florida. Yeah. The biggest concentration in Florida is Osceola County, just south of Orlando. It's 45 percent Puerto Rican. Trump carried it. Mm, mm. So that whole the whole thing about the Puerto Ricans and the island of garbage, that didn't work. People knew that they had other important things to vote on rather than a comedian's jibe. Yeah. And so in terms of as a campaign, then you're talking about, you know, this thing that we've been speaking about before, which is this idea that people's bread and butter issues matter a lot more than this whole well, vibe thing that the I'll, I'll, Democrats I'll give are you an example. Yeah. Native Americans, the Please. equivalent of your Aborigines in Australia, yeah. voted two to one for Trump. Yeah. You will not read that anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. But it's in the exit polls. Yeah. And so then through all of this, then, there's the great role of the media and how the media has, I think, been incredibly derelict with the way that it has dealt with the entire Biden administration for more to go. And by this, I mean, you know, the commercial media, the ABCs, you know, the CBS, NBCs, CNNs, New York Times, Washington Post, that kind of blob. They must have an awful lot uh, of explaining to do if they were really honest with themselves about how they did not, uh, you know, check on Joe Biden's increasing mental incapacity, uh, check on Kamala Harris's uh, political incompetence and her very, very lackluster record of public service, you know, despite, you know, the accolades of the way she sort of trumpeted as this amazing sort of figure. Um, what, where do all of these institutions, which are now sort of in crisis, go? 
by the way, an American voter who just watched Sky News Australia would be far better informed about what happened in the last year than any American network would have yeah. provided them. I think that the media is irredeemable. They're incapable of reforming themselves. Their owners, though, Jeff Bezos is a very critical player here. Jeff Bezos has decided the Washington Post is now being run by the inmates of the asylum. Yeah. And perhaps there has to be a stronger hand. That's a hopeful sign. But I predict the media will be replaced before it reforms. If Time Magazine, which always picks the man or woman of the year, if Time Magazine picked the real important player this year, it would be the podcast, mm. which is in danger, at least in political coverage, of replacing the legacy media. And John, finally, before I let you go, you know, there's this figure who we all had a bit of sport with over the last 107 days and who I think we need to just, you know, give a bit of a farewell to, uh, Governor Tim Waltz. And tell us, how did he wind up doing uh, as the vice presidential candidate in his home state and in his own home county? Well, he himself called himself a knucklehead and yeah. proceeded to prove that. Yeah. Um, he returns to Minnesota defeated. He lost his home county. The members of the last football team he coached, a majority of them voted against him. And the Republicans took one house of the legislature, so he's now a lame duck governor and term limited and will be out of office in two years. Well, he's going to be an incredible pub trivia question, I think, probably in about six years' time. But that's all the time we have for now. John Fun, thank Pleasure. you so much. Thank you.